Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skera and I'm here today to show you everything that's new in the latest Construct 3 release uh, 182. Now there's quite a lot to get through so I'll try to be quick, let's jump in. First of all, uh, one of the big new features is you can uh, use SVG files directly in your projects. So here's an SVG file I've just dragged and dropped into the layout view and as you can see you may uh, recognize this image, uh, this is a SVG um, of a tiger and as you zoom in uh, the detail increases and you can uh, obviously you can use this in the runtime as well so this provides a basic way for you to use SVG files directly in your games using the new SVG picture object so take a look at that if you want to use SVG files next up new features in the tile map uh, aspect of construct there's a new feature called auto tiling so this can automatically um, put the uh, relevant tiles next to each other. So you'll notice there's a new tile map image here in the, um, for the tile map plugin. And the auto tiling uh, brush is here. And if you click on edit brushes, um, you can see this pattern here. So essentially you can take two styles of tiles, such as water and grass, and by creating a certain kind of pattern like this and uh, telling construct which tiles go next to each other where, um, it can automatically figure out which tiles to put next to each other. And this default uh, tile set comes with two brushes. There's uh, one for a fence. Uh, so I'll just draw this to show you how it works. And you can see as I move the mouse around and I'm putting down tiles, it's automatically figuring out which kinds of joining tiles to use. So this makes it much more quicker, uh, a lot faster to um, design tile maps using complex designs, especially where two different styles of terrain join each other. So hopefully that will make things a lot quicker for you to uh, design your tile maps. Another new tile map feature is that um, there's this. Uh, there's always been the ability to set the collision mask for a individual tile, uh, but previously you couldn't completely remove the the collision, uh, which would make it awkward if you wanted to have certain tiles which are decorative only and don't collide. And now you can choose toggle collision polygon and it changes color to indicate it's not being used there. And now that means this tile here won't um, register collisions. Okay, moving on. Um, another new feature is uh, in the share plugin. Let's add the share plugin, it's here. Uh, there's a new uh, action to request a app uh, rating. So this has been a popular request. Uh, you can use this action to uh, prompt the user to rate your mobile app in the uh, store. So that will be relevant for Android apps and iOS apps. It's been a popular request, so we're pleased to be able to add that now. Moving on swiftly again. Um, another popular request which we've implemented is there's now the ability to sort families into subfolders. So previously, uh, this families folder here uh, would just list everything. Uh, I've taken the Space Blaster demo and there was the existing enemies family and I've also just created for the purposes of this demonstration another family with two objects representing the player and now uh, the new feature is you can create subfolders and uh, organize everything so that if you have lots of families you can sort everything out um, and organize them to uh, manage all those families and this will display in the uh, event sheet as well using those families. Moving on, again, uh, there's a new feature in the, um, so last year we introduced the new built-ins functions feature with many improvements. We've continued to improve it further. Um, the new uh, asynchronous functions feature allows you to wait for a function that you've created to finish. So I've got this quick demo here, which just calls a function on startup and the function will wait for one second and then append a message saying end of function one. So this is inside the function call. And then after we call the function, we also add another line saying it's after the call to that function. And if I run this, you'll notice that this action here runs straight away after this function, even though it waits for one second. And uh, it can be, it, previously it was difficult to make sure this action would run after that function finishes. So the new asynchronous uh, functions feature uh, is designed to solve this. If we edit this function, you'll see there's a new checkbox here uh, called asynchronous, uh, which means it, um, it will take, uh, it will sort of do its work over time. And this essentially means that you can now use wait for previous actions to complete with this function call. So now you see it's referred to as async and this uh, async icon has appeared here. And now if I add an action to wait for previous actions and 
uh, move that to just after the function call um, so that this action comes after that. Now when I run that, you'll see it waits for one second and prints end of function one. And then after that, it now runs this action after this function has completed. Hopefully that makes sense. I've just provided a very quick summary of that feature there. Uh, we do have another separate video on asynchronous uh, on how asynchronous events work in general, um, which you can check out. And this is just a way to take advantage of that with the built-in functions feature. Moving on again, uh, another new feature. We've noticed some users run into trouble with running out of storage, and this uh, will cause errors to appear in some cases. Uh, to help manage this, there's now this uh, storage cleanup dialog where if you have things like um, lots of downloaded NWJS versions or you've downloaded loads of example projects and it's using up all your storage, uh, this makes it easy to uh, clear that storage and save some space. And there's more advice here about how you might be able to save a storage space on your device if you're running out and it's causing you a problem. Uh, and um, moving on to scripting, there's lots of example. There's some new examples in the scripting section of the start page. So if you're interested in using JavaScript coding in Construct, uh, some of the new examples cover things like using JavaScript code to generate an image. Uh, and using uh, JavaScript code to generate sound. So you can try out these new sound synthesis and uh, image generation. And there's, a, there's several other examples here. That, for example, using a camera um, uh, and analyzing the pixels of the image. Um, so let's just take a quick look at this one. And in the script, you can see there's some code here which will generate pixel data and put that into a drawing canvas. And this just creates a, oops, um, it just creates a noise image, so that's random pixel data. Finally, um, we've made loads of other improvements, as always. Uh, this, In particular, this release, we focused on trying to improve the usability of the software and stop people making mistakes. For example, we've noticed some uh, beginners would um, accidentally try to close an important bar, like the properties bar. Um, and now this will prompt to make sure that you really want to do that. Uh, and it will tell you how to bring it back as well. Uh, so this will make sure that um, you don't accidentally close the bar and then get confused because an important part of the user interface is missing. We've made some changes along those lines just to try and make things clearer and try and say, oh, you sure you want to do that uh, in a couple of places? Um, hopefully this will make it easier to use, especially easier to get started with Construct for the first time. Other than that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, loads of other changes. There's performance improvements. There's tons of bug fixes. Uh, see the full release notes on the website, as always, uh, for a full rundown of everything that's new. And we hope you enjoy this release.